often the most challenging undertaking in translating an idea into a tangible object is finding the right tools and people who can help you. This is especially true for those who may not have a design or technical background to aid in this process. Let's say that hypothetically, you've just come up with an idea for the next big thing. Or maybe you just want to make something fun with your kids. Now, I'll put you into a room full of all the tools that you could possibly need to translate this thought into a tangible object. Clearly, it would be unreasonable to assume that just because you have access to the tools that you need, that you'll be successful. Chances are you still lack the experience needed to drive these tools and the expertise needed to execute your design. Recently, groups around the globe have sprung up in an attempt to solve this dilemma through the use of locally accessible workshops known as makerspaces. Makerspaces are community-driven design and fabrication hubs which come in all shapes and sizes where people of overlapping interest can collaborate in the creation of projects that may otherwise exceed the capabilities of an individual. But what really makes these places extraordinary are the tools and people found within these spaces. <laughs> Sorry. Catching up. Advisors found on site serve as a resource and include those who have traversed the path of developing design. Technical staff within the facility, local experts, or simply peers who frequent the space all contribute to the collective knowledge based on the discipline in which they excel. Access to even the most advanced tools in the world is pointless without the people who understand the use of these machines and who may offer support in their application. And this is where I fit into the context of a makerspace. Currently, I oversee my own academic makerspace within the Department of Biomedical Engineering here at UC Davis. It's a natural fit that I ended up in the position I find myself today as even from an early age, I found an overwhelming inclination to dissect all matter of broken household devices. Or at least that's what I told my parents. <laughs> Sometimes they weren't actually broken. <laughs> Though I may seem young, I've always had a natural curiosity for figuring out how things work and how they might be improved. So I became an engineer. While an undergraduate student in mechanical engineering here at UC Davis, I nurtured my passion for making things through classical fabrication equipment while working as a student assistant in the Engineering Fabrication Lab, or EFL, here on campus. I was fortunate enough to learn from two very skilled machinists and gain experience through trial and error on a diverse range of projects. Since joining the Biomedical Engineering Department, I've worked to grow my lab from its primitive beginnings into what it is today, a state-of-the-art fabrication and design lab where traditional technologies combine with more advanced equipment. Known as the Translating Engineering Advances to Medicine, or Team Lab, my primary role is to guide those with ideas to completion through teaching and technical aid. With the support of those like myself, anyone can, can formulate new skills and ideas to create physical objects with the ability to enlighten and inspire. Countless projects take place in makerspaces, everything from experimenting with art and technology to developing commercial products and inventions. These places are found worldwide and often serve as cultural incubation spaces which foster creativity and expression, not just science. Even within Davis, there exists a publicly accessible makerspace. The collection of craftsmen, developers, and self-described nerds make everything from sound lighting to life-sized origami horses. Culture and creativity are important cornerstones to many active makerspaces, including those in academia. The difference lies in how those efforts are directed. So whereas a privately held makerspace may focus and channel all of its efforts into personal objects and art, academic makerspaces focus solely on scientific endeavors. But that doesn't make them boring or any less significant. The academic makerspace that I oversee serves the needs of our diverse users who include graduate level researchers, undergraduate students, and even local businesses all of whom wish to make use of the advanced tools found within this space. Many of these tools include traditional machining equipment of years past, but still others include advanced equipment, like 3D printers, 3D scanners, laser cutters, and circuit board plotters, all of which are designed to expedite the development process at, while maintaining a low investment cost. What better way to show the value of these tools and talent than through example? 
I'd like to share a couple quick examples of projects which have recently passed through my makerspace and point out that without the existence of these academic innovation centers, projects like these most likely would not have occurred. So this first project that I have for you is that of a prototype for a prosthetic blinking eye. I really love this example because it showcases what can happen when you bring together talented people and world-class tools. So as you watch this video, I want you to remember two things. First, that this project was primarily developed by a team of undergraduate biomedical engineering students mentored by a UC Davis surgeon and a local ocular prosthetics practice. Second, I want you to realize that this device was developed within a matter of months and with a very small budget. Components to this design were made via 3D printing, laser cutting, and hand finishing techniques. There was also a great deal of interest um, invested into the electronics and programming that controlled the lifelike motion of the eyelid. This project was entirely designed and manufactured within the confines of the Team Lab, an academically focused makerspace. Ultimately, this project's goal was to work towards helping those who struggle with disfigurement so that they may gain back their self confidence and feel more normal. This next example illustrates an ongoing collaborative effort between my lab and the Vet Med Teaching Hospital here at UC Davis. By leveraging the capabilities of the team space, world-class oral surgeons here at Davis are saving the lives of their animal patients. This is a particularly meaningful project to me as I am the proud parent of two furry friends myself and can relate to the emotions tied to an animal's well-being. And yes, that was an excuse to get my animals in this presentation. <laughs> so here's an all-too-common scenario. An animal, perhaps a dog with a cancerous growth upon its jaw, arrives at the VMTH in need of life-saving surgery of the jaw and or facial region. The animal is first subject to a CT scan in an effort to gather data on the current condition of the patient. This data, which you see represented here, is then reconstructed into a 3D model. Next, the process data is sent to a high-precision 3D printer to be duplicated in physical space using an additive process. With this physical, 3D-printed representation of the patient's bone structure, surgeons here at Davis, like Dr. Boaz Arzi, can more effectively plan the surgical techniques that ensure that this patient has a greatly increased chance of survival and best possible quality of life following the procedure. By giving surgeons the ability to plan, practice, and even fit custom implants onto these 3D-printed representations before the animal goes under the knife, doctors can ensure that their patients receive fast and efficient care with fewer complications. These patients are the recipients of the most advanced surgical techniques in the world, and that includes humans. And owners flock from all over the country because of this collaboration with a makerspace. I chose these examples as they, they serve as supreme illustrations of the capabilities um, that makerspaces in academia have to offer. Countless others have passed through the space ranging in complexity and significance. But if nothing else, what really comes and goes to these spaces are empowered and educated individuals who use the tools and talent in these spaces to do amazing things. Just as in a private setting, the development of an academically oriented prototype is challenging and often proves to be a stifling force in research productivity. By providing tools and talent, academic makerspaces serve to expedite the device's end of research and development which ultimately improves the world in which we live. Through an understanding, or rather, since the addition of the team lab, we've seen a substantial growth in what our students, our researchers, and even our local businesses are capable of. These spaces prove to be valuable assets to our students and our communities, and are an asset worthy of your attention. Through an understanding of what these spaces have the potential to do and be, more than anything, I would like to inspire you to act and encourage more of these spaces to thrive. Even if you can't make direct use of these spaces, the number one way that you can encourage growth of academic makerspaces and makerspaces in general is to tell others about the wonderful things that they're capable of. As more people are aware of the existence of these spaces, more applications will naturally come forward. There's so much untapped potential which only need the guidance provided by a makerspace to set in motion. Seek out, contribute to, or take part in these spaces. Now is the time for action, and you can help simply by sharing what you've heard today. Thank you.